It is one of the most significant conservation projects in the world, the ongoing work to restore the Hunley submarine. Will we ever know why she sank? Attempts to answer that question, plus details on new and emerging technologies up next on The Big Picture. Hello, and thanks for joining us here on The Big Picture. I'm Mark Quinn. Today, we're paying a visit to the Hunley submarine. Hard to believe that it's been eight years since the Hunley was raised from the bottom of the Charleston Harbor. Since then, a team of world-class scientists have undertaken the painstaking work of restoring what many have called one of the most important underwater archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. Much of that you already know. What you probably don't know is how the project to preserve the Hunley has been the catalyst for a whole range of new science. In the clearinghouse for most of that innovation is the relatively new Clemson Restoration Institute. They say some of that science has applications in the real world, applications the Institute hopes might one day mean an entirely new economy for the Lowcountry. The Hunley is housed not far from where she was raised, no more than a few miles from Charleston Harbor. It's located on the grounds of the old naval base in North Charleston, a parcel of land along the banks of the Cooper River that had been mostly deserted after the military left town a decade ago. Now, like the Hunley itself, this area is being revived with development of all types. The last conservation center houses a number of new and emerging technologies. There are researchers here from more than nine countries all around the world. They're in the process of creating a world-class institute, cutting-edge science directly related to preserving and saving the Hunley. To the untrained eye, the submarine still looks in many ways as it did in the summer of 2000. Concretion covers nearly every inch of her outside skin, the result of spending almost 140 years in the ocean's floor. Removal of all this buildup is a painstaking, time-consuming task. More than 10 tons of sediment have been taken from our interior alone. One reason why that project has taken so long, the excavation of more than 1,500 bones from the eight crew members, bones still being cataloged and mapped today. We really don't really understand all of the processes going on on something that's corroded like the Hunley is. So you still have a ways to go. I guess that's the exciting part for that's you, That's the right? exciting part for us. And um, as we put in the kind of scientific instrumentation we need to address these fundamental issues, this is one of the real missions of the university, to take a facility which is a world-class conservation facility and translate it into one that is a world-class facility for conservation research. The Hunley captivated world attention when she was raised nearly eight years ago. Civil War buffs were fascinated by the sub's role in naval history and the story of her intrepid crew. The Hunley was the first submarine to sink an enemy warship, but nearly as soon as she helped to sink the Housatonic, the Hunley disappeared. Over the course of the past eight years, scientists from all over the globe have dedicated major parts of their careers to restore and conserve the Hunley, a project that has, in the last few years, taken on international significance. I would tell you, we started this as a historical recovery project, and we found that before it was over, history and science had to come together to tell time and to preserve the future. And that's what's exciting about what's going on. None of us envisioned that this particular laboratory when I saw this building, it was a sound stage for the TNT movie, right. Hunley. Right. And about where we're standing is, is close to um, where the ballroom scene was. And the port scene was back in, in the little area on further back from us. None of us ever envisioned that the Hunley project would grow to the magnitude that it would. But within the first week that we had the submarine out of the water and in here, this building was surrounded by thousands of people trying to get in because they had heard we were opening the doors, which we were, to the people who helped us raise it. We found out what a phenomenal draw it was. We found out it had worldwide attention. Um, so we got the, the big picture of the tourist industry. Tours come here, people come here. Now the research is going on here, the science in, the, in how to conserve her and stabilize her. All of that is occurring that starts getting added to the exhibit. And this is turned in from a small submarine being brought up to a big project. So now the Lash Center has become a focal point of international conservation and archeology. span 
four years ago. As an outgrowth of the science being discovered here, the Clemson Restoration Institute was established. Their mission was the creation of an economic engine spurred on by developing and emerging restoration and sustainable industries. That business blueprint has been used before from Silicon Valley in California to the high-tech hub in Austin, Texas, to the Research Triangle in Raleigh-Durham. All of those began as a result of partnerships between private business and public universities. And the plan is to make North Charleston America's new home for still emerging technologies related to sustainability. I think the thing to realize is that the Lash Laboratory that houses the Hunley now during its conservation is one of the, if not the premier uh, laboratory in the country. We're putting about $3 million worth of new investments into that laboratory, which will include electron microscopes and, and things that would be used well beyond the Hunley Project. But the Hunley Project has been an important seed. Uh, we've learned a lot uh, in this conservation. We've learned not only from the material side, uh, but the thoughts about what we might do in the future relative to rust and prevention of corrosion. But even on the archeological side, you have people developing information from essentially uh, what was a scene and determining whether there might be uh, applications in current law enforcement relative to the recreation of a crime scene. So science is, is helping to drive a lot of opportunities that might occur in the marketplace that would be beneficial to today's society uh, while we're restoring at the same time and conserving an important artifact. And here, as we build our in-house expertise, one of our missions is to build connectivity to local industry because one of the things we've learned on, from the main campus that when you start building these industrial partnerships and start bringing their problems into your laboratory, trying to help them solve their problems, it very often translates into solving some of your own problems. And that might eventually mean that uh, we solve problems and, and need more people to work at these industrial type places. That's it exactly. It could mean jobs and that's, dollars that's exactly. and a whole new tax base. That's the kind of thing that politicians like to hear, I think, that's right? right. And, and jobs that attract more jobs. You build a warehouse, you have a limited number of jobs, you'll never have any more than that. In fact, in most cases, you'll have as technology goes on, you'll have less. You build on a knowledge base, the more knowledge, the broader your knowledge base becomes, the more new resources you need, the more new people you need, it grows. All the while, the Hunley itself continues to be coy in giving up its long-held secrets. The major archaeological highlight is this misshapen gold piece that was uncovered in 2002. It was a good luck charm carried by the ship's commander, Lieutenant George Dixon, given to him by his sweetheart back home in her native Alabama. But there still remains one huge question. Archaeologists don't know why the Hunley sank a question we hope to make headway on later in this program.